I know this is a very difficult time, but you must think very seriously about what you're going to do with it. Now, five grand isn't pocket money, you know, and there's more to life than donkeys. All I'm saying is, is spend it just how you like, but make sure you don't fritter it away. Fritter? What's the pain? Too late. Ivan's left your breakfast in the oven. Oh. She's gone off with Sid to buy one of those photo albums with wedding bells on it. <laughs> now, I know what I would do if I had it. I'd buy myself a nice little... Bassford fast... franchise? Thank you. Double your money in two years. Yeah, if you're lucky. If you're sensible. Oh, but no. I think it's something you should think very seriously about. Oh, I don't know. Do you know well, it's better than leaving it to a animal's home, isn't it? Why? You what? Why? Well, because... Uh, well, because it's the only money you've got. There's plenty of rich, daft old women leaving money to cats' homes. I didn't say cats. Well, donkeys, then. Oh, I don't know. Well, I wish somebody would leave me five grand. Well, I wish I didn't have it. Gee, up. Just, just find yourself a nice building for five grand. You months. keep out of this. Please. Sorry. You've got to think what... You have to think what Diane would have wanted for you. Don't worry, Sam. Oh, come on, man. Cheer up. Well, you've got to look to the future. You see what, John? I can't worry about you as well. If you don't want to be here, then go somewhere else. Well, I am manager of Brown Hill, I suppose. Well, why don't you go there, then? Well, we've got a rush on at the moment. Bad timing, I know. I wasn't supposed to have anything to do with Crossroads, remember? Well, that was Dan. Now there's Jill on holiday, your father off on a tour of the Red Oxies, all these refurbishments planned, courtesy of Sissy Heaton. Well, sh and here I am. I shouldn't worry. After 20 years of mismanagement, they can survive anything. I could run this place with my eyes shut. Brown, tartan, carpet. Ah, is that what he's chosen? Not right through, from, from, from the, the reception to the, to the dining room. That's revolting. He goes in his faculty. <laughs> I didn't even know you could get brown tartan. Your father, anything's possible. <laughs> Especially with Sissy Heaton, the chief advisor. <laughs> I remember your face when he ordered that live lion for his out of Africa evening at Tusk. I remember your face when he got one. <laughs> your dad thinks it's Brian. What? Upsetting you. Mum, I haven't thought about Brian for the last six months. No, of course you haven't. I think I'll uh, get back to the kitchen. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Anne-Marie. Uh, my husband will be away till Wednesday, so I'm just uh, checking on one or two things for him. Right, well, I'll be out here if you need me. Fine. Debbie, I know you don't like it here. And I don't know why, and I'm not going to ask, so you don't have to tell me. <laughs> well, that's nice. I'm not going to be a nosy mother, but... If you want to go around looking gloomy all the time, that's your business. But I'm just concerned about you. Oh, six months ago, you were choosing a wedding dress. You were so happy. Mother, you don't need to remind me. So it is Brian. It's not Brian. Oh. Make it a golden rule never to work with parents. Uh, can I use your phone? Sure. Thanks. Oh, um... Anne-Marie, do you think you could go over to the staff room to get Mum a cup of coffee, please? Yeah, of course. Thanks. <clears throat> oh, hello. Um, could I have marketing, please? Uh, yes. Hello, is Dave Gould there, please? 80, 90, 100. Where'd you get it? Rapid Ray, fingers grice. Fingers grice? Ah, it's not bad. I want it with my own two hands, there. Mm, snooker. I think you had it in here. Well, that's not the same. No man makes a profit in his own land. What? Me. Tanner like mine goes unrecognised, doesn't it? I could be a genius, you wouldn't know it. I know there aren't any big snooker matches at this oh, time of the year. Oh, yes, there are. And I won nine frames to eight and I re-spotted black. Not just a smelly vest, you know. Huh. Oh, you've never been just that. Yeah. 80 quid and 40 on, on the side. <laughs> 80 plus 40. Yeah, well, well, I had to buy a couple of rounds, didn't I, to celebrate. <laughs> but I'm going to split it. I'm going to split it between me and you, the shopper and the kids and your mother. Well, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Well, that's for me. 
And that's for you, the shop, your kids and the mother. Half and half? Yeah. Oh, you're a very fair man. 50-50, you can't say fairer than that, can you? I'll tell you what, I'll throw in a big posh meal tonight. How about that? Oh, Dave, thank God. Where have you been? All right, never mind. Got all of you at last. Yeah, well, I want to see you too. Right now. <laughs> OK, I'm on my way. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> yes, of course I do. Bring your letters ahead, Sample, for the rise. You can have a look through them, though, if you want. Oh, yes, I said I would, didn't I? Yeah. Um, I'm afraid I can't. Oh? You can always ask my mother to have a look at them for you. Yeah. If she isn't immersed in her golfing news. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mrs. Tardy. Big, how are you? Good, good. Think she's a bit unstable. One minute she's up, and the next minute she's down again. Oh, I wanted to have a word with you. Well, it better be a short one. Well, it's about Benny and Diane's money. What about it? Well, I want to ask your advice, because he trusts you, Benny does, doesn't he? Well, more than he trusts me, and I thought you might put in a good word for me, you know, about our Janie. Well, what's Benny got to do with your Janie? Ah, well, he can have a part share in a new unisex hairdressing salon at Bedworth. It's only a thousand pounds a unit. And what's a unit? Oh, I don't know. But they've hired the premises from the turf account. Well, look, I think you should just leave Benny alone to do whatever he likes. But he'll give it all to the donkeys. Somebody ought to talk to him. It's your lucky day, isn't it? Here he is. Oh, hello, Lou. One of the sinks, it was all bunged up. You had your dinner yet? No, I'm just going through to have it. Oh, good. I'll come with you. Come in. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I was actually expecting to speak to Mrs. Chance. Oh, I'm afraid I'll have to do for now. Right. Uh, how can I help you? Um, I'm afraid we've got troubles in the kitchen again. Well, I didn't know we had trouble in the kitchen. Uh, do, sit down. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, I'm afraid we have, and, uh, well, it's got a lot worse since Diane. Well, you know. And, uh, basically, we've got an explosive situation down there. Really? Uh, and no one seems to want to know about it. Well, I do. Um, it's the chef. Well, what about chef? Well, he's a bigoted, sexist, racist pig. I see. And you, that's not the problem. We've known that for ages. The problem's um, Carol. Carol? Yeah. Well, you see, um, she's West Indian, and uh, a chef keeps having a go at her. He had a go at her this morning, and again just now, and all because she was cutting the chips too straight. And, and then this argument blew up. He started calling her all kinds of names, and, and she threw a leg of ham at him. A leg of ham? Ham on the bone. Well, she, she's a big woman. What names did he call her? Well, I'd rather not say. It's, I just thought... I'd inform you about the explosive situation in the kitchen. Well, thank you very much for telling me. What do you suggest I do about it? Do? Well, we can't have hams flying around the kitchen. They're too expensive. We could put a note up against racism. Yes, thank you, Paul. Um, I do appreciate your concern. <laughs> about Debbie. I was thinking about these plans for the Merry Monarch Bar. I want to know what that weasel-faced little runt's been saying about me. I'll have to hang up, Tommy. Uh, a little problem with staff relations. Oh, you know what staff relations are, Tommy. The government sent us a little booklet telling us. Yes, yes, I'll see you at about half past six. Ta-ra. Now, what on earth do you think you're playing at? Not that there's a fortune to be made in hairdressing. Still, it's nice and steady. You know, shampoos and sets and highlights. It's a good, reliable business. Oh, Roy's getting the business. Oh, is he? We're going to be having a talk about it. Oh, but my Janie had training. She's got certificates. She was the best manicurist in a year. Benny's money will go off. Pardon? His money. If you talk about it any longer, it's going to go off. Go off. Don't be stupid. Money can't go off. Why not? Because it can't. What about inflation? I'm not an economist, Paul. Well, if Miss Diane was here, she'd tell me what to do with it. Hiya, Benny. Hi, Roy. I'll uh, give you a lift back to Bellevue later, if you like. Well, we can have our little chat. Well, uh, about hamburgers. Uh, 
Deep Pan Pizzas, if you must know. Oh, is he? Deep Pan Pizzas. I wish you'd watch your language. Not that it's any of your business, Mrs. Tardybeak. Oh, it's me. And I suppose I'm supposed to stand here while this little lad gets done out of his inheritance. Well, well that, that's enough. If anybody else says anything more about my money, I'm going to be really sorry. Right, let's try and sort this out, shall we? Chef? I've got nothing to say. That's funny. You had a lot to say earlier. With my so-called little helper I was on about. Not your little helper. Too bloody right. Language. I'm the only person that swears in this office. He should be in the kitchen. He uses abusive language the whole time. And he gets upon my nerves. Is that fair, Chef? I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> It's his fault for making a mountain out of a molehill. He should mind his own business. Miss Carol, now you claim that Chef uses abusive language. Now, is that right? Yes, among everything else. Well, let's hear what he said then. You what? I want to hear what he said. No, we're not repeating it here. Sounds too stupid. Well, if you won't say it out loud, why don't you write it down on a piece of paper? There you are. Oh, this is all totally childish, you know, Mrs. Lancaster. Hey, and I didn't say that second one. You did. So, there's more than this if you want it. And you did, actually. Totally out of context. Now, did you call her a... What it says there? Yeah, I did. Just looks bad on paper. You wouldn't get away with that in Brent, pal. You shut your ugly mouth. You see, Mrs. Lancaster, he's like this the whole time. Oh. And he'd get drunk. All right. All right, we know now what he said. Now, what happened next? That's when she hit me with the gammon. Ham. Gammon! Shut up! Both of you! Okay. How much do you like me? <laughs> what sort of question is that? Well, you don't have to answer it. I don't know. I'm no good with words. Well, I'm in certain situations. If it's business or something, I'm brilliant. I really am. How much? I don't know. God, it's like I'm 16 or something, and I'm 29, you know, 30 in a few days. No. Is that a real turn off? No, of course it isn't, Dumbo. Dumbo? God. It's in the place of sweet nothings, you know. I'll tell you what. Yeah? How would you like to order two 12 pack carton of mixed vegetables? You are? On a weekly basis. Well. Well, come on, I thought you said you were good when it came to business. I am. You place an order like that with me, and I'll be the golden boy of the company. Orders will be up, and I'll have an excuse to spend more time here. And that way, Maureen won't be suspicious. And, of course, you never go short of diced carrots, swede and sweet corn. Well, we already serve up peas. Not here, love. At your dad's motel. Mixed veg at Crossroads. It's not a Park Lane job, it's a motel. What else do they expect? Yeah, all right. I'm in a place can never have too much frozen mixed veg coming. Well, there is one good thing about today. My husband wasn't here. Because my husband is a deeply contented man who believes that he is running a happy ship. All right? Chef, get drunk. You all know that chef get drunk. On the Red Ox coach outing to Rill, the chefs are drunk from nine in the morning. But, my God, put them in a kitchen and drunk or sober, they'll cook you a sirloin that's bloody on the inside, charred on the outside, and perfect, because they're professionals. Now, I suggest that you two try to be nice to each other and to Carol. And to that uh, Filipino lass that's always sobbing into her handkerchief. Well, that's nothing to do Shut with up. it. That's her thriller in Manila. As I said, my husband is a nice, contented man. A kind-hearted man. But if he'd been here today, he'd have sacked both of you. That's all. Now, do you mind if I get on with some work? I know you think I'm some con merchant trying to make off with Benny's money. Well, I don't want to talk about it. The whole thing is sorted beyond work. Well, that tardy big woman, she's yeah, a right scary. Yeah, a couple of vultures. What I am offering him, Anne Marie, is an investment opportunity. Yeah. Stop him blowing five grand on cats, dogs, and donkeys. Yes, 
I know that, Roy. You've said it several times. If this pizza thing makes out, it'd be great not... What if it doesn't? What if it turns out like the shop? Thanks. Would you have Benny's money in your conscience for the rest of your life? Look, I don't mean to be unsympathetic. I do want you to get on. I've always wanted you to get on. Yeah, I know. When did this pizza thing come up anyway? Well, it's a bloke I know in Apecock Screen. He's opening a place outside Heathbury. He said I could go in with him, but uh, five grand, though. I had to let him know by today. Oh, I've tried the bank. No chance. Well, let's face it. If I'm a bad investment for the bank, I'm bound to be a bad investment for Benny, aren't I? Almost as bad as the dog zone. We can't let that happen. I'm going to ask Mr. Chance to have a word with him. I wouldn't have stolen it from him. I, I'd have worked hard for him. No, you wouldn't. Hey, up. What's your tea? Uh, fish fingers or tinned ham? No, it's not. We'll have a bar meal at the stag. Are we? Yeah, well, I'm not staying in this place on my night off. Come on, get your coat. Me? me? No, no, I can't. Oh, come on, you need cheering up. Anyway, besides, I've got some bad news for you. What's that? Pizza deal's off. I've had a note from him, mate, and he said he'd like to have offered you an investment opportunity. But Colonel Sanders got there first. Shame, that, isn't it? Mm. Come on. Ginger beer for you and a snowball for Emery, and we'll see the world in a new light. Oh, um, by the way, you couldn't find room for 12 cases of tin beetroot. Salad speciality of the month. People always leave the beetroot. Oh, they make soup out of it in Russia. Not in Russia. Oh, you surprised me. Dave. Yep. This is so you can spend more time here. I told you, the whole point. Yeah, sign the order, doesn't it? Well, I sort of don't see how one order can make so much difference. Look, it's this order and any others I can get that keep me up here four days a week. Look, I'd just like to know whether you're using the veg for my sake or me for the sake of the veg. Oh, Debbie. Look, if I was penniless, starving and on the point of death, it'd still mean more to me than, well, a million packs of any processed vegetable you care to mention. Okay. You sure? We'll have four 12-packs on a weekly basis. Four? And the devil take the consequences. Stay with us here on UK Gold for a dramatic trip to Denver after the break. It's Dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> 